All right, let's get started. Hello, everybody. This is September's engineering update, and uh, I am Stan Hu. Um, I'm going to first start by welcoming a number of new members. I think I might have missed Greg Stark from last time. He wasn't on the team page, but now he is. He is. Um, but I also want to welcome Mikkel. Um, I think I misspelled your name there, but um, sorry about that. I'll fix that later. Uh, Davin Walker for support, and Alex uh, Strachan for support as well. So welcome, board. We really need your help. Um, GitLab 10.0. Uh, I think I want to highlight this. I read the blog post. There's too much to cover. Um, this, is, uh, the, the, this is the draft post. It's not actually published yet, but I encourage everybody to read it. The big highlights from 10.0 are going to be Auto DevOps, the new navigation, but there's a ton of other stuff in there that we're, I'm really excited about. Um, stuff like uh, S3 support for LFS and things like that that will really help a lot of our customers and GitLab.com. Uh, I just want to talk about and highlight some great work done. Um, this is sort of behind the scenes that necessarily isn't called out in release posts, but uh, I know that Fatih started this and uh, with the help of Jacob Schatz and Phil and Philippa and Tori and Sean Dow to review all this stuff. Basically, they took our existing uh, issues and uh, issues discussions and refactored it in Vue.js. Well, that had two benefits. One, it, it decreased the technical debt because it's much easier to test and debug issues with uh, code written in Vue.js, but also it made things faster because we, instead of loading everything at once, we are now loading the page and then pulling in other things asynchronously. So in some ways, it's, it's, it's not exactly a direct performance improvement because we're moving stuff outside of the load, but at least users perceive that the initial load will be faster. And uh, if you look at the, the issue there, there's a bunch of other related issues that say oh, we can make this go faster. So I'm hoping by 10.0 we can get this number from, originally it was about two, over 2.8 seconds. Now it's under uh, two seconds, so 1.8. I think we can get it down to under 1.5 or even faster by this Friday or this, uh, this Thursday when the release goes out. So super excited by, by those improvements. I think they're, it's, it's again, not highlighted necessarily in a release, but it's uh, something that we should be proud about and, and shows that you know, refactoring does also pays dividends as well. Yeah, it is the beginning of the performance improvement. There is a lot more there. Um, I want to talk a lot about Geo because that has been on my mind and um, you know what's going on in 10.0. Uh, I've talked a lot in the past about the previous architecture with system hooks. Basically, every time you do something, like you push, uh, a hook goes out to the secondary, and then it does something. But we've removed that completely. Um, Essentially, we removed a lot of code as a result. Uh, if you look at the numbers there, there are 63 changed files, but close to 1,500 lines of code deleted as a result. So uh, oftentimes, you measure the progress by the code you delete, but not by the code you, you add. Uh, the new architecture has a, uh, this geolog cursor. We've documented that. We've added it to the documentation. Thanks for Tone for removing system hooks and Gabriel for adding the diagrams and documentation around it. Um, what that means for most customers is that uh, you've got to now move your geo installation to, to make SSH lookups happen over the database. Traditionally, it's been done by this authorized keys file that you have to manage. It's really hard to manage. Um, big customers are having trouble can keep making that consistent. Um, but we've, we've, we've made a lot of progress in figuring out how, what's the story for CentOS users. CentOS 7.4 have a good story because the new upgrade in September makes it this possible, makes it really easy out of the box to enable this. Um, something Gabriel's been working on for a while is this hash store support. Um, you can look at my last update to see the details, but there is now a setting in the admin page to enable this. It's, it's a bit of like a feature flag because we're still testing it out, making sure that there aren't any corner cases. But essentially, the idea is that we don't have to touch the, uh, the, 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 the path of the repository once it's there. And it's, it's an immutable name. We never have to rename it. So that will help with Geo and help with GitLab.com quite a bit. But we're still making sure that it's working before we enable it for everybody. Uh, there were a bunch of security fixes. Nick came in right away and just saw immediately some, uh, some potential security holes and patched them right away. So that, those went out uh, with 9.5 and also with 10.0. Um, and then we fixed some other customer issues, for example, People, a customer had an issue cloning LFS objects from a secondary, and we fixed that pretty quickly in 9.5. Uh, the next slide really talks about what does it take to make geo production ready. Um, and this is sort of the test bed that we have set up right now. Uh, if, you heard, if you hear that word test bed a lot, this is basically what it is. Uh, we have production instance in Azure. It 
has a sanitized copy of GitLab.com's database. It also has one file server from GitLab.com. There are a total of 16, I believe. So we've only taken one, just take a snapshot of one of them. And then we have an, uh, another uh, geo instance in a different cloud. It's running a different database. It's the secondary of the primary and then also a, a separate file server. So we're essentially trying to test GitLab.com or at least some subset of it and just see how this performs. And I'll give you a little bit update of where we are right now. Um, what we found immediately was that large databases have, need some optimizations and Nick added some great optimizations that at least get us out of the rut where we were before, where we weren't syncing. We were basically retrying the same uh, projects or failing because the query was too big and we've added a workaround to at least make that go. Um, in 10.0, we've identified that we want to use Postgres foreign data wrappers because we have a primary database on the secondary and also a tracking database on the secondary to, to track what we've downloaded and what we haven't downloaded. And so this foreign data wrappers allows us to tie these two databases together in a nice way and make queries um, that are less expensive. Yeah, we're also testing Geo that's bigger than any customer that we have. I've been on calls almost every day last week with customers setting up Geo and they have far fewer repositories and Geo seems to work for them right now. Um, we've worked out some issues and we've identified them, but it's at least we're progressing and getting customers using it. Um, for GitLab.com, repositories are still syncing way too slowly. They're, they're going, but they're way too slow right now. You can see at the, the chart below, uh, we started this last week and it's only up to 0.06%. Part of it is that um, we are uh, too conservative about how we're scheduling things. So at 10.0, we're going to focus on increasing the parallelism and reducing the scheduler delay. Um, basically, the scheduled delay is the time at which we decide to go say, hey, go clone a repository from that primary. And we're just too conservative right now. I wanted to highlight sort of um, the work that we've done over the last releases and just see um, what our time is being spent on on bugs from previous releases. So this is, these are called regressions, bugs that uh, surfaced from the current release, things that worked in the previous release that no longer work. Um, and, the, and the blue line is the number of closed issues. The red line is the total closed issues for that release. And then the orange line is percentage of the issues relating to that. So you can see in 9.0, about 20% of it was regressions. It crept up to 40%. 9.4, it came down to 20%, but it's 9.5, it's closer to 40%. So um, it's not great to keep introducing new things, but you know we're spending a lot of time trying to fix customer-related problems or things that surface, um, and we're going to have to figure out ways to address this so that we're spending uh, less time fixing things that we broke and getting ahead of that. And, and to be fair, some of the stuff, the regressions, are things that we saw in release candidates, so they didn't actually get out to customers. But in general, our testing suite should have caught that before it even went out. Concerns, um, things that we need help with, uh, unicorn metrics. Uh, Prometheus team has spent a lot of time uh, in, uh, putting metrics into unicorn so that we can instrument things like how busy are our workers, our HTTP workers, and things like that. But we haven't been able to enable them because they, uh, there's some concurrency issues that are really tricky, and Pavel's been sick, and unfortunately, um, haven't had the, the, the bandwidth to address that. But uh, once we get that in, that will enable a whole new level of monitoring within our application that we really need. Um, we're seeing a lot more performance issues, not only on GitLab.com, but I'm, we're also seeing with customer-related issues. I think there must be at least uh, the number of tickets every, every week we see that say, hey, this thing is loading slowly, this thing is timing out and support engineers have to, have to get on the phone and benchmark and profile and find things that are clearly just not optimal. So um, keep in mind that performance optimization that we will do in, in GitLab.com benefit our customers as well because they're also running into these things. And if we solve it for us, we'll also solve it for them. Uh, we're still getting a lot of error 500s, things that shouldn't happen. We should be more graceful about uh, failing, for example, so if we don't have a commit, for example, we shouldn't totally bomb out on loading a merge request. We should at least load some stuff. But what this really translates into is increased load to the support team because either it's a GitLab.com user or it's a, a customer that says, why is my page not loading? And 
Um, I, I think we've pinged a lot of people on how do we improve these things, but essentially it boils down to just making things more fault tolerant. And if something does go wrong, we at least handle it and gracefully capture it and provide more feedback to our developers about what exactly went wrong. Um, again, the, the last slide, I really highlight the need for integration testing. We haven't put in much enough time in this. Um, for example, you know, LDAP logins, Google Auth have at some point this uh, past release is broken for people and that's really unacceptable because that is fundamental to GitLab. To get into GitLab, you need to be able to log in. And uh, we have unit tests, but in the end, things have to be tested as a whole. So there's a great project called GitLab QA if you haven't looked at it. It's a great framework to add these integration tests. We need to put more time and effort into those things. So we reduce the regressions, reduce the amount of time we're spending on fixing things and more time worrying about the cool stuff that we want to build. Uh, really the plan for the next five weeks for GEO, obviously I've mentioned that we want to significantly increase the performance of that. Really the goal there is to make that ready for production for GitLab.com and to migrate to another cloud if we want to. Um, Gabriel has been working a lot of finishing a tool that will help us migrate to this hash storage format. It's still in review. Uh, Sid mentioned this uh, NFS circuit breaker that will enable availability on GitLab.com that we're still improving that. and. There are still some cases we need to handle so that it doesn't get too trigger happy. We need to reduce the amount of false positives there and have the unicorn metrics to monitor that as well. Um, we're going to Q4, so we need help defining these OKRs for all of engineering. Uh, they're gonna be, I think a lot of them are gonna follow on Q3, but we need to flush those out. Uh, hiring, we're really gonna increase hiring across engineering. You can look at the jobs post and there's a lot of different positions available today. So if, if you know people who are good, Fit. I'll talk about that in the next slide, but if you know people who are a good fit, please reach out to them. We need their help. GitLab 10.1, um, you can look at the kickoff documentation for more details, and then the summit. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody and seeing everyone there. That will, that will coincide with the release of 10.1, so it will be exciting to be in the same place when the release actually goes out. I think last time in Austin, it went out the following Saturday of the summit, which is not ideal because people had to travel and get back. So. Um, hiring, as I said, there's a lot of positions open, anywhere from the geo lead to front and back end developers. And yes, there is a referral bonus. Thanks for that reminder, Sasha. Any questions? All right, I don't see any questions, so thanks everybody for your time. <laughs>